Where on this map is the North Pole? How confident do you feel in your answer? What if I told you that what you think you know is actually a lie? Take a look at these two shapes. They look very different, but if we move into three dimensions, we see that they're actually exactly the same. Magnetic forces can seem quite different from electric forces, but they have major similarities, and they should because they're actually part of the same force, the electromagnetic force. Welcome to Flip Physics. Today I'm going to talk about magnetism. Magnetism is just one part of electromagnetism. We can see this by comparing and contrasting the two forces, the magnetic force and the electric force. Magnets have poles, a north pole and a south pole, whereas charges, they have, well, they have charges, positive and negative. That's kind of like a difference, but it's also sort of a similarity, because there are two types and opposite things attract and similar things repel. A north and a south pole attract, two south poles repel, and two north poles repel. Magnets are metals, whereas anything can have a charge. But both magnets and charges have fields. Magnets have magnetic fields, and charges have electric fields. Neither electric forces or magnetic forces need a medium in which to operate. They don't need a material. Both forces can work in the vacuum of space. But whereas charges are two separate things, a positive and a negative, you can't separate the north and south poles of a magnet. If you try to cut a magnet in half, you'll just end up with two smaller magnets, each with their own north and south poles. Or another way of saying that, there is no such thing as a magnetic monopole. There are only magnetic dipoles, whereas a charge is like an electric monopole. Now, technically, there are some theories in physics which predict that there should be magnetic monopoles, but we haven't yet found any. So although there are some major differences, there are some clear similarities between the two forces. This can be seen most clearly by comparing the field created by a magnet and comparing it to the field created by an electric dipole. They turn out to look exactly the same. So there has to be some fundamental similarity between the two, even if that's just a coincidental similarity or some deeper physical reason for that similarity. It turns out that they're both part of one fundamental force, the electromagnetic force. Electric fields are what you get when charges stay still, but magnetic fields are what you get when charges are moving. So if you take some wires, a bulb, and a battery and connect them in a circuit, the charges moving inside that wire will not produce an electric field, they'll produce a magnetic field. So for example, a long current carrying wire will produce a magnetic field that looks like this. A magnet, like this one, might seem very still, but there are charges inside here, and those charges can move. And if charges are moving, they'll produce magnetic fields. Electrons in the atoms that make us up are orbiting around the nucleus, they're moving. In a lot of non-magnetic materials, they have orbits going both ways. One electron's going one way, another electron's going the other way, and it all cancels out. But in some special magnetic materials, like iron for example, there's an imbalance of electron orbits, and that leads to each atom acting like a tiny magnet. They essentially have an odd number of electron orbits. There's another property, a quantum mechanical property, that electrons have called spin. You can think of it as the electrons spinning one way rather than the other. That's not accurate, but it's just a way to imagine it. And you can say that spinning electrons produce a magnetic field. And just like with the orbits, if you have two electrons spinning in opposite directions, they cancel each other out. But if you get an odd number of electrons, then they can't cancel. And so again, you produce a magnetic field. A combination of those two effects, the balance of the orbits and the balance of the electron spin, causes the atoms of certain elements to be magnetic. Unfortunately, it is a bit more complicated than that. Just because the atoms in a material are producing magnetic fields doesn't mean that the material itself on a large scale will be a magnet. There are a couple of other things that have to be the case for that to happen. For one thing, if all of these tiny magnets, all these atoms, are pointing in random directions, they could just all cancel out, leaving the material with no magnetic behaviour at all. But in some materials, for the sake of stability, the atoms pull on each other until they align in nice, neat rows. A section of the material where they're pointing all in the same direction is called a domain. And the materials that have domains are called ferromagnetic materials. We'll talk more about the different types of magnetic materials in a later video. So, that's how we get a magnet, right? Well, even then, there's no guarantee you'll get a magnet. Because those domains, those sections of the material where all the atoms are pointed the same way, those sections themselves could all be pointed in different directions. Those domains could be pointed in different directions. You'll often end up with atoms lining up one way here and a different way there and a different way on the other side. 
And if those directions are all random, then those domains will cancel out and the material still won't be magnetic. But if you take your ferromagnetic material, like a lump of iron, and you put it inside a larger magnetic field, and that magnetic field could just be the Earth's magnetic field over a really long period of time. By putting it in a larger magnetic field, you can get those domains to line up with each other. And at the same time, by doing that, they're lining up with the external magnetic field. And if you bring all those domains into alignment, you have what is commonly known as a magnet. So this magnet must contain atoms whose electrons have both uneven orbits and uneven quantum mechanical spins. And this material must also contain domains or areas in which the north and south pole of each atom are pointed in the same direction. And those domains must also be lined up all in the same direction. And only with every one of these conditions satisfied does this act like a magnet. So that's in general what a magnet is. But the Earth also acts like a magnet. The Earth has a magnetic field produced by circulating charged ions in the magma. Let's take a look at the magnetic field around the Earth. When you use a compass, the compass needle points in the direction of the field. It points tangent to the field lines. So because the field lines point up here, that's the direction your compass points, which is extremely useful when you're sailing the high seas. <laughs> So, based on that, where is the North Pole? Here, right? In fact, everything you've been told is a lie. This is the magnetic South Pole of the Earth, and this is the magnetic North Pole. If we're going to understand this, we have to think about how a compass actually works. The needle of a compass is actually a small magnet, and that small magnet has its own North Pole and South Pole. This is the North Pole of the compass needle, and this is the South Pole of the compass needle. The pointer is the North Pole. So the north pole of the compass needle is attracted to the south magnetic pole of the Earth because opposites attract. So when we say that a compass points north, what we actually mean is that geographic north is the direction that the north pole of a compass needle points because it's attracted to the south magnetic pole of the Earth. Got it? Good. And this fact was actually staring at you in the face in an earlier video. Let's look again at the magnetic field produced by a regular bar magnet. The field lines point towards the south pole, so the compass needle will follow the field lines and also point towards the south pole. So that means if your compass points north, that can't be the actual magnetic north pole, because the field lines always point towards the south pole. Kind of like how with electric fields, the field lines always point towards a negative charge and away from a positive charge. One thing's for sure, we should be very thankful for magnetism. Years ago, if it wasn't for compasses, it would have been much harder for humans to colonize the world which has eventually led to a lot of the pleasures that we now enjoy. And skipping forward to today, we wouldn't have these amazing MRI scanners in our hospitals, allowing us to take pictures of your insides, even your brains. So, whether you're a human living in America or a zombie that just went on a feeding frenzy, your day will be quite different without magnetism. I dare say it'll be quite different for those people running away from that zombie too. Thanks for watching Flip Physics. If you like this video, you can press the like button. You can also subscribe or go to the flipphysics.net website. But most of all, don't forget to leave a comment below with your questions, thoughts, and suggestions. Until next time, keep questioning. The Doctor can be pretty magnetic until you want to find him, of course, and then I guess the magnet flips. Even your brains. Even your brains. Even your mmm brains.